Good afternoon, Leash Jump and I'm John. This is many a true dirt and welcome back to Starfield. Where last time we gathered a lot of artifacts and unlocked a lot of powers. And today we're going to be wrapping up the last companion mission, Breach of Contract for Barrett, because. Uh, okay, let's see if I've got this right, because uh, history is uh, a bit on the confusing side. Once upon a time, he had a husband, who was hired by a mining company to do some work. But then at some point, the mining company framed him for like, sabotage or something, for the insurance money, and the case was dodgy as anything. So, right, we need to go meet a lawyer, and see what we could do to posthumously clear his name, I suppose. So alright, Barrett, let's see what we've got to do today. Okay, down on the ground by the Luxiovich, yeah, a bit of a dusty world, all things considered, with the one small mining settlement just dotted in the middle of it. So, uh, right, Barrett, and, uh, okay, I swear Barrett was like, you know, on the ship just seconds ago. We all saw it, right? He does enjoy just teleporting about. Blimey, right, Barrett, let's have a nice chat about, yes, precisely what you want us to do. Oh dear, I didn't realise this before, but, um, Apparently, we're going back to the same lawyer who lost the case the first time round, so... Barrett, are you sure about this? Like, there must be another lawyer, one who hasn't already literally lost this case. Yes, but listen, nobody will stand up against the mining corporations around here. They're scared. She didn't want to lose the case, but she didn't have a lot to go on. Thanks to us, now she does. Right, so this is someone you already know. Elia is one of the few lawyers on this planet who's willing to take on the mining corporations in court. Oh, I'm deeply concerned she's going to end up dead by the end of this. Got it. Oh, you've got to say, though, right. This town is, um, a bit on the scruffy side. Like, even next to Aquila City, this looks a bit rough and ready. Oh, speak of the devil, all right, we got a shopkeeper here who can, you know, uh, fill me in a bit on what's going on in this town. Gagarin. It was a military town until the end of the colony war. Mechs were our specialty. Everyone always blabbers about Mars making the highest performance machines. But if you needed a system that wouldn't let you down in a pinch, you piloted a Gagarin. But that all dried up when the mechs were banned with the armistice. Now... We've got these new firms coming in. Arkmight, Centauri Mills, claim they're here to revitalize the city. Which is funny, since their employees refuse to step foot in most of it. Right, that would explain why, yes, this place was a bit of a mess. Same reason as the Den. It used to be important back in the day, but now the war's over, yeah. The galaxy's changed and you guys have kind of been left behind. Okay, beyond that, we get ourselves, yeah, random buildings, uh, mines, uh, bars, etc, etc. So, uh, right, so let's start with Ellie, because I suspect she's going to be, uh, yes, pointing me in the direction of uh, whatever it is we need to find around these parts. Okay, so, um, uh, once again, not the nicest building in the world. So, uh, okay, Ellie, what have you got for us? Because I suspect that, yes, even though I have helped Barrett get a lot of evidence together by spending a lot of money on gathering it, it's not just going to be as simple as, uh, oh yeah, this will be fine, let's get his name cleared. Well, well, well. Barrett, you're actually here. Astounding. Ellie! Ellie, come on. I promised we'd stop by, didn't I? Hmm. People make promises all the time, Barrett. And most folks try to avoid Gagarin, not visit it. Anyway, I'm glad you made it out here. We have work to do, don't we? Oh yeah, she definitely needs more from us yet. Got it. Down to business. Perfect. What do you already know? So we already know that Irvin worked for Hephaestus Mining Company years ago. And they blamed him for catastrophic economic and ecological issues here on Gagarin. Yes. He lost his case because he didn't defend himself, and we had almost no evidence without him. And yes, indeed, that was because he never showed up to court. I think there was mention of him being a threatened or something, right? I recall receiving a message asking him to appear in court a day after his funeral. An unfortunate reality of interplanetary legal communiques, I'm afraid. Okay. 
So we heard previously, yes, he died during the Colony War. It's possible instead, yeah, this might go even further. Could they have murdered him to cover up their tracks if they decided he was going to be the scapegoat for something? Well, we can bring the case to a judge here if we have new evidence or a witness. What about the evidence we've found so far? Yes, well, about that. It's just not enough. It was also obtained illegally, so right, there's that too. So, uh, okay. I'm guessing, therefore, we need to, uh, yes, just go and find some more, maybe by digging around in the old Hephaestus site, or indeed, if they've got one, their office in town. In order for me to go before a judge, I'd like to have some solid evidence pertaining to motive. Okay. So I kind of assumed that was just, you know, insurance money. They just want to find a scapegoat for the insurance money, right? The courts won't entertain a challenge to its ruling unless we're sure that something major was missed in the original trial. What was the motive from the original trial? We had no solid motive after our witness withdrew his testimony. Ah, yes, that guy who was, like, threatened. Maybe he was the one that they threatened. Right, I may be getting, you know, him and Irvin the wrong way round. So, uh, okay, we've not got any more now, but point me in the right direction in town. I suspect we could go get some more. Yeah, we need something major. Documentation, recordings, a witness, something. It's been so long. How could we find anything like that? I've thought about this a lot since the original case. The mine that Irvin worked at was shuttered in 2309. They probably still have documents relating to whatever happened there with him. Okay, break into the mine and let's cock and go. That's where you come in. I don't know which mine he worked at when the incident took place. In theory, you could find that information on a foundry terminal. If you can access it, you'll need a passcode. That's the hard part. Besides the foundry records, there also might be something in Irvin's apartment. If he knew he was being framed, he might have held on to some documents there. Okay, so step one, yes, we need to either break in some terminals in like a mining business somewhere, or alternatively, go visit his house. Ooh, though on top of that, right, apparently I can use foundry systems because I'm a miner, brilliant! Here we go, far side of town, we've got Irvin's apartment. Meanwhile, over here... Okay, it seems barely around the corner. We'll start with, yes, the foundry terminal. See if I can indeed just log straight into that. Marvellous. Okay, guest, Arya's account, admin. So, right, well, I've got my account. Fair enough. I'll log in right there. Get a passcode from an employee. View my assignment, search database, view paychecks. I'm guessing you guys aren't still paying me right, because I have not been doing much mining. I mean, then again... Right, I might be owed money from, you know, that business back on Vectera. Holy flip me, I just got a grant. Beautiful. Okay, nothing else here, though. So, uh, admin access granted. Good. Uh, search database. Possibly I just passed a security check. I'm not sure. So, uh, right. Hephaestus. Search for mines. We've also got ourselves. Uh, hang about. Acceptable filters. Mine assignment. Company. Right, filter two mines as a starting point. Then, yep, Hephaestus, year 2309, lovely, and there we flip it go. Though before we go anywhere, yes, we may as well go and check out the apartment. There's no reason to, you know, potentially leave evidence behind. Right, mosey up to the very top of town over on this side, lovely. Right, 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 right. We've got ourselves, yes, a very run-down old apartment here. Start cracking open this. So, okay. Proper science and whatnot. And apparently, a tiny alien cactus. Hold on. Is that what I think it is? I don't know. Do you think it's an alien cactus? Because that's what it said when I picked it up. That is an extremely impressive specimen. And somehow it's managed to stay alive for the past 20 years. I'll hold on to it for now and see if I can't dig up some of Irvin's research on it. Okay. I'd like to think, therefore, maybe that cactus is going to be important to the case. I'm not sure. Okay, beyond that, we got ourselves a yes. One terminal right here. 
So, okay, unlock safe, and that, however, is locked. Okay, expert locked. But this might maybe tell me where a key's hidden or something. Apart from a purchase and... Oh, an anniversary gift to Barrett. That's sad. Oh, and I suspect I may have just, um, yes, discovered what the shooty part of this mission is, which is uh, the assignment he was given that he then got screwed over with is, uh, yeah, a highly intelligent alpha predator somewhere near the mine. And apparently uh, it was extraordinarily aggressive. So, uh, okay, that was his job. And by the sounds of it, he did not manage to deal with it, though... Uh, I'm starting to worry whether, yes, possibly, the twist of this mission is uh, he wasn't framed. Like, instead, uh, he was just very bad at his job, and that's going to be difficult for Barrett to hear if so. Okay, one bit of evidence here, though. So, uh, after he was given that mission, he applied for a hunting license. So, uh, he did bare minimum attempt to, you know, take out the beast. Possibly you need a hunting license to buy big sexy guns or something. And unfortunately, that's it. So, right. The safe needs a computer to open, and the computer needs expert security. Right. There may well be a key hidden somewhere, but I cannot see it. Nope, unless I've missed something, and no sign whatsoever of, you know, a key, a note, anything that would get me past the security. So, We'll come back here later, Barrett. For the time being, uh, let's start with, uh, yes, the town hall. Let's see what we can do uh, here. See if we can find out, yes, what license he was applying for or whatnot. Okay, I see. This is just, yes, an alternative way to get the location because the license is specific to the mine. So, uh, right, two different ways uh, to get that information. Gotcha. Well, in which case, yeah, may as well mosey onto the mine before we go and visit the lawyer again. Because, yeah, if there's gonna be anything important, it's gonna be in here. Oh, and hello, sexy. Hang about. We've got ourselves... Uh... Oh, dear. Right, we've only just arrived, and, um... I feel like there's definitely trouble going on, but that's absolutely fine. Because, yes, indeed, my new uh, longer-range McJibble should be able to... Barrett, I would not charge forward right now. Just just stay here and let me take him out while, like, you know, floating over the top of them and then nuking them with my nuke gun. It's all going to be fine, okay? Oh, and speaking of which, right. I'm guessing they evacuated in a hurry because of those... Oh, blimey, hello, speaking of which... Hi, 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 no trouble. No trouble, I say no trouble. Some, some trouble. Some cocking trouble, actually, just... John, reload the cocking weapon. Right, hello over there. Don't, 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 don't mind me. Right, so that was the boss one. Got it. I also don't appreciate how, like, you know, it's kind of got a skull on each leg. I don't appreciate that at all. But yeah, seriously, this actually doesn't look great for Irvin. Like, they literally hired the guy to exterminate the predators. And he took the job and, you know, got the license to do it. And the Predators seem to have merged everybody no, here. Which kind of feels like they were right to blame him, actually. Oh, and the game is just determined today to punish me for not taking expert bloody security. Because, uh, right, another door. So, uh, bare minimum. Let's see what we can uh, figure out here, precisely. On this occasion... Okay, seriously, I'm sorry I never took expert security game. Right, so the miner was decommissioned. Uh, fair enough, we know about that. Employees, here we go. Irvin, terminate local predator. Assist Dr. Helgi with environmental impact study. Right, they were mining her through slime and biomass. But that led to gases escaping through bacterial layers. So, right, there's a lot of, like, biomass underground or something. And a few weeks later, dead creatures around the entrance to the mine. So, uh, right, they may have unleashed something uh, quite dangerous from underground. And that's what drew the pests in. They wanted to eat the creatures that were now dying en masse around the mine. Except at that point, the predators started becoming, yes, unpredictable, and even started attacking each other. So, uh, 
Right, you guys seriously messed up the ecosystem, didn't you? And that's the point Irvin was hired to assist. Oh, but this could be critical. Right, there may be predators here now, they've like, you know, moved back in later. But we've got a note here from Hephaestus confirming Irvin did precisely what they told him to do. He killed the largest predator, so right. He did his job. Like, if the mine was a bust, that's their fault, not his. They hired him to do the job, but he did the job. Now, this feels like, you know, a pretty critical memo. But yeah, the problem is, despite that, the mine was just uh, not a very productive. So, uh, right, they blame it on the animal situation, pin it on Irvin, uh, and possibly have him killed to cover their tracks, I'm not sure. But whatever did happen at the mine, uh, right, the other doctor also quit. They were doing something very bad indeed here, got it. So in which case, uh, okay. Down into the mine, we've got to figure out what it was that annoyed Helgi so much. Well, step one, I just check what's going on here and... Uh, okay. Well, nothing alive apart from me and Barrett yet, bare minimum. That's good. Oh, never mind. There are some things right there. Are, oh, dear. There are some things going on down there. Right. Um, Probably best bet would be... Uh, Take out these guys uh, first. So, right, you guys just like, you know, stay over there while we just nuke the surrounding area. Beautiful. Okay, first a wave is uh, dead. So, okay. Before we go down into the mine, let's just make sure, you know, uh, we've checked out the officers and whatnot. So, there could be uh, skill magazines, evidence, etc., etc. Here we go. Finally, someone who locked their terminal in such a way as I can open it. Beautiful. And here we cocking go. Right, so uh, there's a microbial colony network in this planet, but unfortunately, yeah, their mining was releasing chemicals uh, into the network. And by the sounds of it, that was a pretty, you know, uh, core important part of the entire planet's ecosystem. It was the destruction of the bacterial colonies, not the apex predators. So. They ruined the ecosystem here, and it had nothing to do with Irvin. This is it. This is what Ellie needs to see. And okay, this makes sense. So, uh, right, the ecosystem collapsed, and they decided to blame it on Irvin because he recently did some culling. But yes, it wasn't actually killing the apex predators uh, that caused the problem. It was, you know, uh, the bacteria, the very far bloody end of the food chain. That was what did it. Right, so may as well mosey down to the bottom of the mine. There's definitely going to be something else here yet. Lovely. So, right, one more workstation. Right, Helgi's. Good, 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 good. Also, oh dear. Disassembler micro gun. No, no, no. No good at all. So, okay, just uh, further supporting the theory we've already got. Her resignation letter, though, by the sounds of it, we kind of need to find her. Like, I feel like they can sweep this under the rug unless we can get her to actually testify. Also, I can't help but notice some, um, yes, multiple mentions of uh, queens here. I'm guessing there's going to be a queen, though I'm also, you know, working under the assumption based on what I'm reading. I shouldn't really be, like, killing these guys. These guys are important. Don't kill them. Speaking of which, there she is, so... Okay, you know what? I'm gonna blow her up anyway, because I feel like it. So, okay, you just go down. Lovely. Nice, easy bit of XP. Sure, I may have devastated the... Oh, hang on. There's... There may be more trouble yet, though. There may be a tiny, tiny bit more trouble yet. Just blow up the rest of them. Lovely. Okay, I may have devastated the ecosystem, but that's fine, because one, I've now got XP, and two, we can pin it on her face. Just brilliant. Okay, I feel like at this point we've got, yes, a pretty bloody decent amount of new compelling evidence. So, uh, let's mosey on back to Ellie, though uh, I strongly suspect she's about to tell me, yeah, you need to go and find Helge. What you both found in that mine is remarkable. These documents show that the chemicals released by the mining process contaminated the ecology even before Irvin was tasked with removing the predators. And they also show that Helgi informed Hephaestus of the issue, and it was repeatedly ignored. And with that, 
I think we've got ourselves a case, my friends. Yes! That's what I wanted to hear, Ellie. Woo! Yes, but it's still likely to lose. Because what we really need now is Helgi as our witness, and that is a problem. Okay. So we really like, you know, ought to win, but there's also a lot of uh, massive corporate corruption going on. Gotcha. So, uh, fair enough. I understand. I've spent time on Neon. I get it. So, uh, right. We need to find her. It's just, for a case with this much science, we need the man who wrote the claims to back them up. Maybe even explain it in layman's terms. All right. Also, apparently Helgi's a chap, as it turns out. So, okay. I mean, the town's not that big. If he still lives here, we can just, like, go door to door till we find him. You might ask Dr. Keala. She checks up on folks who fall through the cracks sometimes. You'd have to convince her to tell you where he is. That might be hard. Sounds like we're making a stop at the med clinic. We'll be back when we convince Helgi to be a witness. Listen, if he refuses, then he refuses. Can't force him. Yeah, we don't want to press him too hard. The last thing we need is him refuting what he wrote. This is going to take a light touch, but I think we can handle it. Okay, maybe like, no threats, no bribes, we've got to do this softly, softly. Got it. Oh, and more important than any of this nonsense, just to confirm, Space Frog has made it to Gagarin. Marvelous. Right, Doctor, let's have a chat about, yes, Helge. I'm sorry, I'm not a tour guide. You'll have to ask somebody else. We're trying to help him. And Gagarin, actually. And uh, yes, indeed. Ellie Yankton, maybe you know and respect Ellie, given it sounds like, yeah, she's like the only person locally who's willing to stand up to the mining corporations. Ellie's a good person. That bodes well, but I can't violate my oaths. I'm sorry. Listen, I can say that Helgi took up a job working at Clint's store just down the way. I saw him there stacking boxes the last time I picked up an order. I've got to get back to my work here, so if there's nothing else... Okay, it does rather feel like, um, yes, this conversation went in a single line from I can't tell you to actually never mind his information, but sure, whatever, Starfield, it's all fine. And yes, indeed, if it comes to it, would you be willing to, like, you know, provide a, a character reference for Helgi or something? If it's patient medical records you're after, I'll remind you, I'm not at liberty to discuss that. And no, 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 just pertaining to his, like, you know, coherence or whatnot. We're thinking of taking Hephaestus to court with Dr. Hawkson as a witness. Now, given his situation, we're worried the defense might, um, cast aspersions on his character, even question his mental health. That's unfortunate, but not surprising. <sighs> Look, if he agrees to testify and grants me permission, I could vouch for his well-being. Thanks, Doc. If he does end up testifying, we'll definitely need you for the trial. Ellie Yankton will be in touch. No promises, given patient confidentiality, but I'll do my best. Okay, now that's good. We're building, you know, a stronger and stronger case here. I love it. Oh, and here's a fun coincidence. Literally that shopkeeper I spoke to about, yes, this planet the moment I arrived. Uh, you're the person I need to speak to now. Marvelous. Don't mind the mess. I've got a system. It's okay, Clint. I'm not going to talk to you about the mess. Instead, uh, I'm trying to find Helge. Funny you ask, because I'd like to know too. He owes me a sizable debt. Okay, so... You know what? Here's four grand. Just tell me what you know. Nobody is going to know where he is, aside from someone who knows the underbelly of Gagarin. And that is Lizzie up at the bar. That's who you need to ask. Okay, I'm just being sent from person to person. Eventually, maybe someone will actually bloody know something. Okay, seriously, Lizzie, does anyone in this bloody town know where this guy is? Seriously, do I need to bribe every person in this cocking town before someone tells me something? Thanks for your patronage. Sending your receipt directly to you now. 
Okay, so we've got an address, and I'm going to be honest, I feel like, yes, we shouldn't, like, you know, ask you or the shopkeeper to vouch for his character. The doctor would be a much better bet, and we've already got her on sides. And here we go, just down under the city, we've got our chappie, so, uh, right. We were specifically told, uh, softly, softly. I don't suppose you're here to tell me I've won a ticket to a new planet, huh? Sorry, Doctor, not today. We came to Gagarin to investigate Irvin Madani's contract with the mining company a long time ago. Ring any bells? Irvin, yeah. Biologist. Hunter. Yeah, I remember him. Why? Who are you people? Alright, so, yes indeed, we need to... Okay, buddy. Buddy, 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 buddy. I was kind of hoping we could just, like, you know, be chill and friendly, but, um, uh, not really an option here. So, uh, yes, indeed. Let's talk about what you two were working on. Then find the history slate. An ancient history slate. Because that's what it is. Please. Irvin was once one of your colleagues. He was the one who faced this blame for an ecological disaster about 20 years ago. Do you remember any of that? No. I don't remember lies. Okay, so here we go. Now we can finally say who we actually are. All right, this is Irvin's husband. All right, I'm doing this as a favor to him. It's been 20 years. 20. Get out of here. Look, I know this is strange. We show up out of the blue about things that happened decades ago. But right now... Nobody, save us, knows the truth. And that means we're the only ones who can clear Irvin's name. Okay, so right now he's not seeming, you know, uh, too into helping us. And there's no persuade option either, so... Uh, look, we know about what they did, we know you tried to warn them, we're on your sides. Eh, and what of it? You probably think the sky is blue too. Well, you'd be wrong. It's whatever color Hephaestus says it is. Only if you let them. You're a scientist. Your words matter. That's why we need you to testify. Testify? The trial is over. The verdict rendered. In case you two clowns didn't get the memo. Okay, and uh, yes indeed. Ellie, she's reopened to the case. Marvelous, and uh, yes, like we were told. Don't try and, like, you know, play hardball or bribe him or anything. We need to persuade him. They specifically said, uh, softly, softly. Ellie. Ellie Yankton. But why? Ah, it doesn't matter. Nothing's changed. No, no, no. He's coming round here. And on top of that, I'm a xenobiologist too. So, uh, you know what? This origin's actually been pretty bloody useful. It's come up a lot over the course of the game. I see. Normally I would dismiss the idea. It would be easy for them to assassinate my character and drag my name through the mud. But with your corroboration as a xenobiologist and the overwhelming scientific data... <sighs> Fine, you've convinced me. I'd be willing to testify on one condition. I want to know what happened to Irvin. Because when he disappeared, let's just say I had an epiphany. Hephaestus didn't need to say a word. That's when I knew the threats against me and my family were real. Dr. Hawkson, it wasn't Hephaestus that took Irvin's life. It was the war. Irvin was just in the wrong place at the wrong time. Caught in the crossfire. Then I am sorry for your loss. It won't change the past for either of us. But I will testify. And maybe, wherever Irvin is, he'll be glad that we can finally stick it to those assholes at Hephaestus. Thank you, Doctor. Yeah, yeah, don't get all mushy on me now. <sighs> I need a drink. And there we cocky go. We've got our witness, so... Uh... Admittedly, we still never, like, you know, cracked open that safe. I could not figure that out. But it sounds like, to me, we've got enough evidence anyway.
So here we go. Final report into the lawyer. Helgi will testify. And on top of that, the doctor is going to be a good character witness in case if Ace does start being a bit silly. Well, that is perfect. She's probably the best person to call on should Hephaestus decide to play dirty. Well, you two have done all that you could. Now it's time to hand the baton off to me. What do you think, Ellie? Do we have a chance? You've done a pretty decent job gathering evidence for this case. So what's the verdict? In this case, I'd say spoilers are appreciated. I am cautiously optimistic we can win this case. Optimism is good, especially from you, Ellie. We'll likely be able to clear Urban's name and charge Hephaestus with a number of crimes. The only challenge I see is getting all of that and recompense for Helgi. But I'll do my best. All in all, though, really outstanding work. We wouldn't have gotten this far without your efforts. And I've got to imagine that wherever Urban is, he appreciates it too. Agreed, Ellie. And thanks for being our anchor in this. We should probably get out of Ellie's way and let her do her thing. We can talk more in private. So, all right, by the sounds of it, yes, yeah, so we're done gathering the evidence, which means... Uh, okay, you're about to basically admit you've fallen in love with me, aren't you? Like every bloody other person in Constellation. Here we go, back on the landing pad, so uh, yes indeed, Barrett, me and you can wrap this up in front of Asko. Wow, we actually did it! Solved the case, and hopefully cleared Irvin's name. I feel like... what's the old saying? A great weight has been lifted off my shoulders? But it's actually true. I feel like I'm 80% biomass and 20% aerogel. If nothing else, the court of public opinion is going to side with Irvin. If we lose, we could always leak the docs to SSNN. I mean, I'm going to be honest, that's, um, it's a good plan. In fact, we really should just do that. Like, that's way more likely to work than just going on with the court case. Though, uh, right, Barrett, I think we both know where this is going. And here we cocky go. So, uh, yes, indeed, anything for a friend... Uh, or indeed, uh, yet more flirting. Though, uh, I'm going to be honest. I kind of just feel like Barrett and me are friends. And not more. And uh, I'm aware I've turned down literally all of Constellation. Like, if I don't marry Barrett, I just don't get married in this game. And I'm kind of okay with that. Like, I just don't feel like I want to marry any of these characters. Some of them I like quite a lot. Barrett and Sam in particular. Some of them, not so much. Sarah and me were always just colleagues, though, okay, she's dead anyway, so it doesn't really matter. And honestly, at one point I thought me and Andreja were going to be a thing, but just... I feel like me and her really rushed our relationship, but in the end there was not enough time for me to get to know us, so... I'm afraid, Barrett, in the end, we're just going to be friends, okay? Anything for a friend, buddy. That makes two of us. Three if you count Harvey. And who wouldn't? He's practically family. In fact, Harvey's got a little explorer in him too. According to this slate I found, turns out that our spiky friend's been all across the galaxy. Okay. So apparently you've decided to name the cactus. I can't throw stones about that. I'd name a plant too. In fact, I have named a plant. I've got a plant whose name is Spike. I've had him for nearly 20 years, in fact. And here we go, time to lock it in. So, I'm sorry, Barrett, but um, me and you, we're just going to be friends. I'm just not feeling it with any member of Constellation. You took the words right out of my mouth. Now, mind if we get back to exploring this beautiful, mysterious universe with me, Captain? And there we go, money, XP, etc., etc., though... Okay, I feel like Barrett, no matter what he says, was definitely into me at the end. But, um, bad luck, Barrett. I've decided I'm just gonna be single. And you know what? While I'm in, like, you know, this bit of the galaxy, I did see a very, very important comment flagging something to me. Which is, apparently, there's one bridge I've not yet encountered. Here we go, back to, yes, New Homestead, where we did the ridiculous alien costume quest. 
Here we go, because yes, apparently, this random unnamed guy who's just chilling out next to the landing pads is indeed selling the gigantic Nova Galactic bits and pieces. So, right, you can tell he's special, because only the special ones sell, like, you know, anything as big as 3x3. Three three. Oh, and bloody hell I will give you. That is one a hell of a bridge. In fact, it's so big, it's got six different attach points. I mean, officially, it does fit, but... Okay, that is ridiculously, stupidly large, and I kind of love it, actually. Here we go, just move the weapons to, yeah, side mounts over here. Add a tiny bit of structure just to, you know, smooth off of the shape of the new gigantic bridge, though... Uh, Okay, I won't deny. This just is uh, slightly ludicrously large, and I love it. Seriously, just look at the size of that bridge. Oh, though, I'll tell you one thing about the new layout, which I quite like, which is, uh, yes, because, like, you know, we now have to go uh, through the cockpit or bridge or whatnot over here. There's now no bridge connecting uh, this floor with all the workbenches uh, to the floor above. And that's actually really quite good, because that means no one's just, you know, randomly going up a ladder straight into my bedroom. So when we go and... Uh, oh, now this. This'll cocky do. Right, I've seen this before once upon a time. A couple of big ships I decided to uh, storm in the past, so... Uh, right. Gigantic, ridiculous big wraparound windows. Uh, my seat is still in the centre right here, and on top of that, behind my personal seat, we get access to my private quarters, which for once are actually cocking private. No one could just go into them without going through the cockpit, so... Oh, you know what? Now this, this I can deal with. Oh, just look at the size of that window. It took us a long time, but I think we finally got there. Meaning at this point, right, there's one final destination to go to. There she is, right up there. So, right. I would say, how about we, you know, take the scenic route a tiny bit. So there's a whole bunch of systems down here we've not been to yet, and uh, we're almost there. We have almost explored uh, the entire bloody galaxy. Oh, here's fun, by the way. The Masada system I just arrived in apparently has got, like, you know, one of those wibbly atmospheres that messes with your shields or whatnot. And as for my new firing pattern, honestly, I liked it better when it was a bit more wraparound, but I guess it'll cock it do. Oh, and, um, speaking of a decent opportunity to, uh, test out my ship, can't help but notice there appears to be a, um, yes very large ship over there, like a ridiculously large Varun ship that is currently blue, but um, right, I may have just stumbled into something important here. Heretics, abandon your claims to this space or face certain death. This is your last warning. Right. Apparently I found a legendary ship. Well, this is a nice way to test out my final loadout. Lovely. So, okay, just, uh, mosey on here. What do we have here, precisely? Three ships. So, okay, just a mosey in this direction. Lock on to you as soon as we get within... We're within 3,000. Right, screw you, basically. Take out all of you in just a moment. Keep my distance from... Yes, no, none of that, please. None of that. Lock on. Lock on. Lock on. There we go. We got a good hit here. Taking some damage. Okay, there's um, there's more yet, though. Also, oh, dear. I feel bad about the... Oh, 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 dear. There's, there's, there's problems with the... I feel like we shouldn't... Oh, there's... Right, maybe, maybe fighting with the legendary Shroud Bearer was a mistake. What we're going to do is put everything into my rear-facing particle turrets and then declare war on these guys and then just turn and cocking run. Okay, I'm going to take you out. No trouble at all, buddy. No, please, just, just don't, no, don't go that direction. Don't go that way. This is all going to be... Oh, dear. Right, now we just turn away from them. And now let my turret shoot them 
as I just vaguely keep boosting out the way, it's all going to be fine, like, ish, possibly. I mean, you know, presumably my turrets are doing something right. They don't appear to be doing much, to be honest. Now, hang on, they are doing something. That's good. That's good right there. Now we just, yeah, boost out the way and consistently, yes, just stay at range and slowly wear the bastards down with my rear-facing turret. It's all going to be fine. We must now be pretty bloody far away from all the rest of it. No, no, no. Where's the... Oh, they're so cocky. I feel like potentially... We might want to, like, reconsider my, my strategy here. Just keep, keep healing, actually. You know what? Get behind you. Get behind you. Heal. 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 Get the lock on. I'm being absolutely cocky. Well, something's dead, which is good. Okay. Now we've lost grab drive. I kind of don't care. Boost to lose the lock. What's left? Okay, hang on. This is fine. And get some distance between me and them. I think it's now nothing but the shroud bearer. Well, we're doing something to the ship behind me. Like, we're definitely damaging it. So we've, like, you know, damaged its reactor and whatnot. Problem is, well, this is kind of working. And also, my shields are coming back at this point. So that's nice. I think I was uh, momentarily out of range. Right, well, we're wearing her down, slowly but surely. Okay, we're now, yes, coming up on 5,000 meters away. I am now faster than she is. We now back away till my shields come back. Because she appears to not have shields. You're a bit on the knackered side, which is good. If we could take out your weapons, that would be cocking ideal. Okay, as soon as we enter, yes, at 3,000 range, we can return a fire. But we can't currently, yes, like, do anything to you properly. There we go. Now we're locking on. Right. Focus on taking out your flipping weapon systems. Right here. And there we go. Now just get past him. Get past him. Get past him. When we're behind him, he's going to be in a lot more cocky trouble. Unless he's got turrets too. I'm... Oh, he's turning around too. That's not good. Right. Okay. Just to focus on, yes, what we've got here. And with that, right, looks to me like you're out of cocking weapons, buddy. Oh, dear. Oh, flippin' dear. Oh, flippin' dear. And now, now we're... He just rammed me to death. Okay, but I think we now know how to defeat him. I'd say the point is, yeah, don't bother firing at just yet. Wait until we're in a lock-on range and then use my lock-on to disable all his weapons. Do not fire anything else first. And, uh, yeah, just to disable you. Get the missiles ready to go as well. Just wait for us to get it to proper lock-on range, okay? Proper lock-on. That's all we need. And any moment now. There we go. Soon as we're locked on, go. And now we just take out all of your jibbles. And with that, you've got no cocky weapons left. So now we just move away. Just let my plasma come back. Turn her around. Don't get too cocky close. And as soon as we are locked on, now make sure, yes, everything else goes down. Two lovely missiles if we've got them. And there's a good critical. And in just a cocking second. One more. One cocky more. And down you bloody go. Oh, now that was a bloody good fight. So, okay. It would appear that, um, yes, there might still be a few nasty surprises waiting for me right here at the very end of the cocky galaxy. So, uh, how about we call it apart there? But next time, right, we are finishing our exploration of Starfield. Literally every system is going to have been visited. And once we're done with that, we're moving on to the final cocking artifacts. Because by the sounds of it, we are almost there. The end of the game is approaching. Every faction, done. Companions, done. We are just down to the last few critical bits of business. So hopefully you join me next time for that. But in the meantime, I've been John. This has been many a true nerd. And this has been Starfields. Thank you very much and goodbye. Ah, we have got a gate key here, and then we have got ourselves- I've made a mistake! I've made a mistake! I've made a mistake! I've made a mistake! This is gonna take all of my skill and cunning as a hunter to sort out- DIE YOU MOVING BASTARDS! DIE! DIE! Go, go away. Go away, nobody likes you.
That was a good idea till it wasn't.